Good morning. Uh, we continue through May to have our designated special giving for Quarter Moon Acres Equine Therapy based in Avery, Wisconsin. There's a little bit more about what they do and who they are on the back of your bulletin. Uh, they're a Christian-based equine assisted therapy center. And what they do is they offer therapeutic horseback riding lessons, horse therapy programs, and training. So it's really, really a neat ministry and one that I would encourage you to support as you are able. The sympathy and prayers of the congregation are extended to the family of Kathy Souza. Kathy passed away on May 3rd, and also to the family of Betty Nicholas, whose funeral was here at the church this past week. Is there any other announcements this morning? Okay. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot be ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left from them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and amend us, so we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The opening hymn is Son of God, Eternal Savior.
day of wrath comes, we have no hope except in your grace. Make us so to watch for the last days that the consummation of our hope may be the joy of the marriage feast of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Today's first reading comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his spare, his share in this ministry. So one of the men who had, who had accompanied us who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The second reading comes from 1 John, the fifth chapter. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have a testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony God gave us in our life. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. And I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you, may know that you have eternal life. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received that, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except for the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have joy made complete in themselves. 
I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to invite the children forward at this time. same birthday, as a matter of fact, both born on the 28th of September. So Angelo and I always seemed like we got picked last. I didn't really like that very much. But why do you think they picked me last? I was not the best, that's true. <laughs> and Angelo and I used to argue about who was more not the best. We ended up on the same little team. Angelo and I. I played right field, he played second base. That ought to tell you who was not, not the best. <laughs> but you know what? We still got picked. And we still got to be part of the team. There's a story in the first lesson today about a guy by the name of Matthias. So Jesus had how many disciples? Anybody know? Twelve. Yeah, twelve. twelve. You were going to say twelve? Good. So you had twelve disciples. And Judas, one of the twelve, fell away. So in order for the team to be complete, they had to find a new disciple. And they picked Matthias. But you know what that meant? That didn't mean Matthias was not the best. That meant that God chose Matthias for that ministry. So for us too, God chooses each of us. Not all at the same time, but he chooses each of us to be a part of what he does. And it doesn't matter if you get picked first or last. We're still a part of God's team. And that's good news because every one of us has something to give to the ministry that Jesus has in the world. Okay? Thanks. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
16 years ago, next week, Cheryl and I loaded pretty much everything we had into a U-Haul and two cars. That probably couldn't happen anymore, but then it did. I got lucky, I guess, or maybe not, because I got to drive a U-Haul. And as I drove into Lake Nevada for the first time, after watching Darren Harvey wave from the parking lot at Oldies, <laughs> we pulled up to the parsonage, and I got the job of backing the truck up to the door so that it would be easier to unload. <coughs> And I backed the truck up, right into the house, knocked the eave trough off. First thing, first thing I did, I got out of the truck and my father looked at me and shook his head and he said, that is a great way to start, Daryl. <laughs> Some of you were there. The story is true, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And as we unloaded that truck into the parsonage, there were things heard said like, how did this guy get so many books? How did they get all of this stuff into one truck? You mean we have to haul this all the way down to the basement? It's a wonder, to be sure, that not only have we been here 16 years, but more precisely, that we made the first 16 days. Now, of course, every once in a while, I still hear, have you met our pastor? He's from Illinois. I don't think that's a compliment. Although I would tell you that I think that Illinois is a great place to be from, rather than in. But still, although we have made our home here now for 16 years, in the spring of the year, I am reminded, indeed, that I'm from someplace else. My dad called me this week, and he said, they're planting already. And now Ted goes to school in Iowa, and he calls me and says, I can't tell if this field is corn or beans, which, by the way, he should know through osmosis. A lot of us, it seems, are from someplace else. And if we look at the lessons for today, the gospel lessons specifically, what it tells us is that every single one of us <coughs> is from someplace else. When I was in seminary, I read a book by a couple of guys. One was named Howard Wass, and the other one was named Willimon. Sammy Howard Wass and William Willimon. The name of that book was Resident Aliens. And the argument that they made in the book, and I think that it's true and it's backed up in Scripture, is that every single one of us belongs someplace else. There's an old hymn that I really, really like, more of a folk song, I suppose, called Wayfaring Stranger. You ever heard it? So it starts out like this. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger traveling through this world of woe. There is no sickness, toil, or danger in that bright world to which I go. The message is that every single one of us, and Jesus says it himself, are really not even of this world. That created in the image of God, we were not made to be temporary, but rather 
that each and every one of us is created in the image of God in order that we may be eternal. The Bible puts it this way. The span of man is three score or three score and ten. Now, for those of you that didn't have to memorize the Gettysburg Address, a score is 20 years. And the message is that life is limited for each and every one of us. My pastor when I was a kid is an old fellow by the name of Ray Shaw. I loved him. And he always said that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody's in any great hurry to get there. But the fact is, for us, that trip to heaven is going home, to that place where we truly belong. Now while we're here, it is important for us to understand that we live for certain, with one foot in this world, but with the other foot in heaven. And as we are here, God calls us, as he called Matthias, to spend the time to the glory of God and in service of the neighbor. With the firm understanding that what Jesus Christ has done for us through the power of the cross and the resurrection at Easter has told us that this world is not all. And the challenges and the joys of our earthly life are but a beginning for us. Jesus said it too. Said things like, my kingdom is not of this world. But his kingdom covers this world. So for us, resident aliens, we look forward to that time, although hopefully we're not in any hurry, that Jesus will take us home, that our joy may be complete. I'm reminded of that over and over again, because when someone leaves this world for the next, We watch them leave with hope. Not only for their future, but also for ours. Because when the kingdom of God is gathered, and when we find ourselves done with this pilgrim journey, that we will truly and forever be home with Jesus. But while we're here, we recall that Christ prays for our protection, for our good, and dies for our salvation. That's an incredible and amazing gift. And so what he does when he places us in this world is sends us out into the world to make disciples. Why? So that others too may understand and know that we are created for eternity. We are built for forever. And we are redeemed once for all by Jesus' death on the cross for our salvation. And that our journey through this world might someday be complete when we are called home. Now, as I said, 16 years ago, we unloaded a truck, just one. And for this period of time, and hopefully far into the future, we will continue to call Lake of Agamemnon home. But we also understand that as Christ calls us on this journey, 
that life itself is only temporary, but the love of God in Christ Jesus is eternal. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To him the day is amazing grace. Gracious Lord God, we give you our thanks that you have built us for eternity. And we ask that as we complete and continue our journey here on earth, that you might remind us that you walk with us each and every day. Help us to spend our lives in the sharing of your love and reaching out with your grace, your mercy, and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also ask that you might keep us mindful this day of our fellow, fellow travelers on this level of time. And that you would help us to see one another through your eyes. That you would grant us your grace so that we might give and receive the forgiveness of sins that you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also this day pray for peace. We pray for peace around our world. We pray for peace in the land of Jesus. And we ask most humbly that you would bring that peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also seek the gift of healing for all of those who are ill. And especially, dear Lord, we ask that you might touch with your healing hand those who we name now before you in our hearts. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we ask for your comfort, remembering that we are built for eternity for those families this day who mourn. Especially we ask your grace upon the families of Kathy Souza and Betty Nicholas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the cup in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Body of Christ, given for you. Blood of Christ, shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty Father, that you refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. 